Hi, welcome to IT Versity, and this is Raghu. And as part of the roadmap to become a data engineer in 2025 series, let's talk about GCP or the Google Cloud Platform. So in today's video, we will discuss all the necessary skills that you need to possess to become a GCP data engineer in 2025. So without further ado, let's begin. Like we do with every video, let's first get the basics straight. So being a data engineer is a job where you need to understand how to ingest the data, store the data, process the data, especially the big data workloads, orchestration, and a bit of machine learning as well. So Google Cloud Platform has all the right tools to help you with the job. And some of these tools are very popular in the industry as well. For example, whenever somebody uh, talks about GCP, one of the first tools that comes to your mind is BigQuery, the SQL based big data query engine by uh, Google. And even PubSub and you know Dataproc, all these uh, tools are pretty popular with Google Cloud or GCP, right? Uh, towards the end of this uh, video, you will gain enough understanding to use the right set of tools to excel in your data engineering journey on GCP in 2025. Let's get started. First, we always talk about storage. In GCP, it is the cloud storage. That is the solution that they offer. And this is the so-called data lake solution, which is very similar to, for example, Amazon's S3 based data lakes or even the Azure Data Lake Gen 2, right? So it offers scalable, very cheap object storage service and you get all the features which are typically offered by a cloud platform in terms of, um, you know, data lake type of storage. You have versioning, you have lifecycle policies, all these features come right with this. And remember, this is a data lake solution. So that means you can store any kind of data, be it structured, semi-structured, unstructured. So object storage is your go-to storage solution when you talk about storage on GCP. Next is the star, which is nothing but Google's BigQuery, the serverless, highly scalable data warehousing solution from Google or GCP. So BigQuery allows you to use SQL on big data sets and you get lightning fast responses within seconds. And this is typically used for, useful for your data warehousing or structured kind of workloads. And BigQuery even has a component called BigQuery ML where it integrates machine learning kind of capabilities right within BigQuery. Next is the ETL and big data. A data engineer is no one without the ETL skills, right? And when it comes to GCP, it is the data flow, which is a managed service for Apache Beam, which allows you to build batch and streaming pipelines. So this is the tool that you need to master. And the speciality of data flow is that it very well integrates with the other platforms within GCP, like BigQuery, PubSub, etc. So having an understanding of this will help you to build batch and streaming pipelines. And it is a completely serverless uh, service and highly scalable as well. And a lot of organizations still run the typical traditional big data frameworks like Apache Hadoop. So if you are looking for a big data set of tools related to big data, especially like Hadoop, Spark, Taze, and much more, then Google has this offering called Google Data Proc, which allows you to provision clusters and handle big data workloads, starting from processing and then writing queries and whatnot. Google also has a secret weapon called Google Data Fusion. It is more or less like a code-free drag and drop approach for handling Spark. So basically it has Spark running on Kubernetes and it allows you to visually create uh, everything that you want without writing uh, codes as complex as it is. So you get a drag and drop interface and you can run ETL or even Spark kind of workloads using Data Fusion. Next, let's talk about the streaming data solutions. GCP's PubSub is a fully managed messaging system which can beautifully integrate with data flow. So PubSub can basically handle event-driven data, you know, real-time events, it can capture in real time, and then it can be integrated with data flow for further processing. Now, if you are looking for an open source uh, messaging platform, then GCP also supports Apache Kafka, 
but usually it is a combination of pub sub and data flow that are the tools that you need in your arsenal if you're thinking about streaming data analytics live dashboards etc etc with respect to gcp when we talk specifically about the ai capabilities gcp has this vertex ai which is again a platform where you can do everything starting with uh, building machine learning models, deploying them, monitoring them and whatnot. And, and being a data engineer, you probably will not be building everything from scratch, but you may be part of uh, workflows where, you know, you may be feeding data to an ML model or probably you're getting the output from an ML model. Let us put it this way, you cannot avoid it, right? So let us address the elephant in the room, which is ML and AI and Vertex AI is the a uh, tool that you need to concentrate with respect to GCP. You also have this Vertex AI Auto ML. Using that, you can train machine learning models without having a much deeper understanding. And you have this Vertex pipelines where you can run an entire machine learning pipelines. Last but not least, let's talk about the orchestration services from GCP as well. So we have a completely managed Apache Airflow service, which is called Cloud Composer in GCP. So that's a wrap about the core GCP tools that you need to master to become a data engineer. We discussed starting with the uh, storage solution, the object storage. Then we talked about solutions like data probe that is for traditional big data. And then we had data flow that is the ETL solution. We have BigQuery and then we discuss Vertex AI and then we discuss Cloud Composer and then we discuss PubSub, so many of them, right? So if you're really serious about becoming a GCP data engineer, then what I would suggest is have a look at these individual tools and try to learn the basics and at a later point in time, master them and be industry ready. In case if you're somebody who is watching this video for the very first time, then check out the entire roadmap to become a data engineer in 2025 playlist. I will pin the link in the description and consider subscribing to the ITVersity YouTube channel in case if you have not done so. And like the video, share it with your friends, pour your valuable suggestions in the form of comments. Also, do let us know what are the other interesting topics or technologies on which you want us to come up with content. Please let us know in the comments. And this is Raghu signing off and I will see you with a very brand video related to the data engineering roadmap next week. Thank you.